Hi there. Here is a review of uh, essentially what we talked about in class today. So here are some steps on how to solve absolute value equations. So we start with, well, an absolute value equation. The first thing you want to do, oh, here's a typo, uh, isolate the absolute value expression, meaning in an equation that has absolute values in it, try to get that by itself first. And again, remember that you have to follow the order of operations you can never add or subtract the coefficients before you multiply or divide. Meaning, if we go ahead to an example, oops, it's too many pages. So I guess we can just look at it here. If you have three plus two times the quantity absolute value of two x minus four, we can never add this three and this two. We have to subtract the three first and then divide by two. We'll see this when we get to talking about it. But here, Again, we never add or subtract before we multiply or divide. So once the absolute value expression is isolated, you ask yourself, is there a negative on the opposite side of the absolute value expression? If there is, meaning the absolute value of something equals a negative number, there's not going to be a solution because the absolute value of something can never be negative. No matter what you do, it's a distance from zero. Whatever the term is, if you're measuring how far away it is from zero, that answer can never be negative. It could be zero, it could be positive, but it's never allowed to be negative. So that's why anytime you have the absolute value of something equals a negative number, no solution immediately off the bat. There's nothing you can do about it. And there's a couple of different ways to indicate this. Sometimes you can write this uh, symbol, Greek symbol phi, which is a circle with a slash through it, or you can write two curly brackets with nothing inside it. This indicates an empty set, meaning there's no solutions inside that set. Or you can simply write no solution itself. Now, if this is not the case, meaning you have an absolute value of something equals either zero or a positive number, then this is where you split up, I guess I copy pasted this stuff. Uh, please fix this typo as well. You split up the absolute value equation into two separate equations and remove the absolute value bars. So basically, you set the inside equal to the positive value of the right side, and then you also equal the inside to the negative value of the other side. We'll see this again when we get to examples. And you solve the resulting equation, solve the resulting equation. Now, this is the most important part here. You must check your potential solutions in the original equation. Not one that you created here, not one that you created here. You must go back to the original absolute value equation that you were given in the problem and then check your answers there. It is entirely possible that these equations have no solution, have one solution, maybe only, the, only this side works but not this side, or it's possible that they have two solutions. Both of them are solutions. We won't know until we check our answers in the original equation. Now here again are the same exact steps but just written out. And here's an example. So let's say we're asked to solve three plus two absolute value of two x minus four equals 11. Step one is to isolate the absolute value expression, meaning I need to get rid of the three. So what I did is I subtracted the three over to the right hand side. So 11 minus three gave me eight. And then I have to get rid of this two I have to divide the two over to the other side because it is being multiplied by the absolute value bars. So if we divide the two over, we get four here. Now just to highlight a common mistake in the very first step, just to, to go from here to the next step, is to add the three and the two. Cannot do that because you're breaking the order of operations. This two is being multiplied by this absolute value. So we cannot ignore the multiplication and do the addition first. Not possible, can't do it. All you have to do is get the absolute value by itself first. That's step one. So that's happened here, step one is over. Now, what if this equation had been absolute value of two x minus four equals negative four? Problem's over, no solution, because the absolute value of anything can never be a negative number. It has to either be zero or it has to be positive. You cannot have the other side of an absolute value expression being a negative number. Never possible. Now, since the right-hand side is positive four, we move on. 
to step three, which is basically split the right hand or split the absolute value equation by changing the sign of the right hand side. So the first equation remains 2x minus 4 equals 4. And then the other one becomes 2x minus 4 equals negative 4. So you keep the inside the same and you set it equal to the same number on the right hand side. Then you keep the inside the same and you change it on the right hand side from positive 4 to negative 4. The next step is to solve these resulting equations. So solve 2x minus 4 equals 4. This is going to give us x equals 4. Here you solve 2x minus 4 equals negative 4, and this is going to give us x equals 0. At this stage, I've left the verification to you. It's not too bad. Well, I guess we'll just do it together. If we take x equals 4 and we plug it in here, we're going to get 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. And then the absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 and then eight plus three is 11. So 11 equals 11, that means x equals four is a solution. We verified it in the original equation and we got a true statement. Now if we take zero and plug it into the original equation, two times zero is zero, zero minus four is negative four, absolute value of negative four is four, four times two is eight, eight plus 3 is 11. So we actually get that both of these numbers are solutions to this uh, absolute value equation.